gut. And uh, spent another five or six days in the hospital, went home, and started recovering. And actually, amazingly, about two weeks later, I was back at work. I was strong enough to get back slowly, but kept going. And uh, in January of that year, I remember playing, I was tossing a football with my sons and my cousin and my dad. And I reached up to try to grab a football, and I felt something tear in the rib. I knew something had happened. I went back to the doctor, and they said, yeah, you've torn some muscle tissue there. We're going to do that surgery, and they took me back in, <clears throat> opened me back up and did more surgery. So in less than a year, I've had three surgeries where they just cut me wide open. And the reason that was different and big for me is I've never been a hospital day in my life. Not since the day I was born. I was 45 years old, and now I've had three major surgeries and was facing stage four cancer. And you guys realize that uh, stage four is not... I'm with you. There's, there's not a stage five. And so here I was faced with this. Let me give you a little bit of background who I was at that time. You see, I was like you. How many of y'all play athletics or have played sports sometime in your life? That was my life. I was an athlete. I played four sports in high school. I knew exactly what I wanted to do when I got out of high school and college. So I could become a coach. Got right out of college and went into teaching and coaching. And I coached for 19 years, that's what I did. I was a baseball coach, a football coach, basketball, softball, track, etc. Now I didn't do all this at the same time, those are different years. In fact, I wore this tonight, and I had it in my car. We actually ended up, my teams over those 19 years winning eight state championships in five different sports. And you see, I was driven to win, I was driven to succeed. I was an all state ball player, and I was an all state coach. I became coach of the year three different times in the state of Georgia. My goal was to become a member of the Georgia State Hall of Fame. And I don't say that for a prideful for because I'm just telling you that's what I want. That's who I was. I was so consumed with being in shape and being fit that uh, I became a personal trainer. I became a nutritional counselor. I became a strength coach at my school and started a weightlifting program. In fact, guys, and girls, anytime my classes would come in, they knew that there was a there was always a challenge by Coach Tidwell. This was my challenge. If you can beat me in push-ups, if you can beat me in dips, I'll take you to the nicest restaurant in Atlanta and buy you whatever you want. And you know what was interesting? Here I was, 38, 39, 40 years old. I never bought that meal. Because if a guy got down and did 75 push-ups, I'd do one more. If a girl did 30 dips, I'd do one more. They never knew how many I could do this. I would never do more than one. Pass that. But I was so consumed with being in good health and good shape that I drove myself to stay in such good shape. And that's what I was. In fact, on my 40th birthday, I ended up, I participated in 40 sports. I competed in 40 sports on my 40th birthday in 24 hours over a three state period. Had six or seven pro athletes with me. And we raised about $20,000 for youth fitness. So that's who I was. And I'm here today to tell you that's just. That's why this was such a blow to my life. Because it went against everything. There's no cancer in my family, there's no disease in my family. Here I was, Mark Tipwell, the guy in shape, and then he stage four cancer. Well, March came two years ago, and I was re-diagnosed, the cancer came back to my liver, went back into the hospital in July, and had another surgery, it was my fourth surgery. In fact, I went into the hospital on my 25th wedding anniversary. 5 a.m. I checked into the hospital with my wife. That's okay, it wasn't all bad. I got to spend six days straight with her. She was right there by my side. And uh, I'm not sure what that is. But uh, you know, it wasn't all bad. I had a button over here I could push, and nurses would come anytime I push the button. And uh, over here I had a button I could push, and morphine would come into my body and get high. So really, it wasn't that bad. I said, yeah, don't do that. Don't recommend that. And don't, don't, I guess if you smile at that, you can't. Can't get buttons that give you drugs. Don't do that. But uh, we came out of the hospital and then I went through chemotherapy for six months. And you people seen folks going through chemotherapy, right? It's tough. Did that for six months. And I was cancer free, they said. That was a year ago, a year and a half ago. And so to fast forward, this past January, I went back for my next scans and uh, they said, you know what, we're really sorry to tell you, the cancer's come back to your colon. And this past February, more surgery, cut open once again. And in May, I had an attack, intestinal 
fact, the block is the Russian technology to learn the sixth surgery after I was in the hospital for nine days. And right now I'm pretty weak. Just because I've been cutting so many times. That last Tuesday, they cut me one more time just because things weren't healing right. And so I'm all patched up tonight. And if you, if you try to beat me tonight in push ups, you win. And I'll put that on hold for a minute. This guy up here standing in front of you has been diagnosed six times with cancer. They said they don't know how much time we have. And here's what happened last summer, okay? Here's what I wanted to challenge you with. Because that's kind of the bad news. Last summer, I was at a coach's camp, and uh, I was standing there, and this guy walked by with a Nike football shirt on. And I remember to this day, it said, uh, I had a guy playing a football linebacker, and he was just really jacking his running back, knocking him on his rear end. And the tagline said, ooh, that's going to leave a mark. And I thought, that's pretty funny. And I walked away and I thought, you know what, that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be leaving a mark, but in a positive way, in a good way. We're supposed to be etching a message, an impression upon those we come in touch with and contact with in a good way, in a positive way, I thought, you know what, that is the message that I want to live out for the rest of the lives that I have. And I got to think back, you know, have, have I done that as a, as a coach? Have I done that as a father? Has I, have I done that as a husband, as a friend? And sad to say, students, many times I look back and I, and I thought I had not done that, and I know it. So here are three words I'm going to leave with you tonight. I want you to remember them really easy to remember. They all start with the same letter. And then it was easy for me to remember because I'm this old coach and athlete, so, you know, I need a little help. And here's the first word, impact. When you hear the word impact, you think of maybe a collision. You think of something happening, just bam, bam, right there, hit. Show that next slide. Look at that. Those are impacts in the sports world. The dude up top there, he got impact and he got hit, and he's getting ready to have an impact on the map when he hits the map, right? And then he's playing soccer, but I'm not sure what's going to happen there. But these are examples of impact. All right, next. I like that. That's a good one for football season right now. Hopefully some of you. Any of y'all play football right now? I thought I saw a few. You girls do? Awesome. Can y'all hit like that? Okay, good. Good, I hate to be a running back right there. All right, next. I know it's not school like, but real quick. The word impact, I want you to remember this as a noun and it's a verb. You see, in the noun sense there, it's the striking. It's a, con it's a contact. It's collision. It is an effect. Two cars having a collision head on, head on. That's a impact. That's collision. In the verb form, to drive, or to press closely, to collide with, to strike forcefully. Those are terms that mean kids impact. What kind of impact do you have? What kind of impact do you have at home, in your school, on your team, with your friends, in your community? Next. In Jeremiah 23, 29 says, is not my word like as a fire? It said the Lord and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces. And I like that visual of a hammer having impact. Young men, young women tonight, you could be an impact. The question is, you already are, what kind of impact? Let's move on. The next word is influence. And see, the, the word influence has a little longer lasting.